Good sheep. Watch out. Good girl. Yeah. Thank you, JC. Mama baby. Oh, thank you, JC. Ma Mama baby. Alright, thank you, JC. That's on the low end. I milked her really late last night. And I'm milking her a bit earlier this morning. Making some ice cream today. Our ice cream making setup. Super simplified setup. In here. This is a little over a half gallon. This is two liters. And just a cup of honey into your gallon of sheep milk because sheep milk is sweet enough that it barely even needs any sweetener in order to be able to pull off tasting like actual ice cream. This is from this morning, still still warm, so it'll mix in a lot better. Honey's not, doesn't mix very well with cool and definitely not freezing milk, so. And you'll know that it's totally mixed in when you set it up right and you look on the bottom and the honey doesn't fall to the bottom. So cream has a much lower freezing temperature than the water part of the milk, the skim part of the milk. So the skim milk freezes first. I'm taking out the ice crystals and leaving a higher ratio of cream inside my main vat. And the cream will fall through the colander and then I can add it back to this main one. Checked it about four hours ago. Can wait until it's 50% frozen and then just pour off the cream if you want. You don't even have to do this straining, you can just pour it off. After another four hours. Got these little world centers, centric, compostable, made from plants, little cups. I bet I could fill up eight to 12 of those with one gallon's worth of milk crystals, crystal milk. Little shards. That's the crystal milk. That's the cream! This is your cup. You want your free sample? It's the most I've ever processed it. Usually, I've just been eating it from that, and I think that's amazing texture. We made ice cream. Legit ice cream right here. My type of ice cream right there. Right, this is popsicle mold. Did not work out as being as efficient as I had foreseen to convert their dairy pets' excess milk into a commodity that they could barter or sell. Um, also, the cream separator is not an item that uh, people are going to find as efficient as this. Uh, what I'm calling cream freeze separation method. This new method is it actually makes a creamier cream that separates than using the traditional manual cream separators. And the second thing that I ran into that was a problem with these cream separators is that they need to be cleaned regularly and they have all those parts. And the butter fat that is sticking to the outsides that you're having to clean off is really, really, really hard to clean off. It's I'd say it's impossible to clean off without consistent access to hot soapy water. 
Got this little battery. It's in the freezer now. So that's that's my portable, um, my ultra portable. Oh gosh, that's it's good. it's just one cup of honey per one gallon of uh, sheep milk. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Um, there's two different products I have here. Out of one gallon of milk, I get that much ice cream, and this thing full of um, crystal whey. Basically, this is all protein, and that's all cream. Oh. And the reason I'm trying to separate them is because the protein is bad for my stomach mm -hmm. because I was over, I was over consuming the sheep milk with a leaky gut symptom that started predominantly from uh from not having vitamin c now that, that i'm uh learning mm -hmm. uh because your gut starts to open up when you don't have vitamin c yeah. and starts to let through more things and be uh, less picky about what it lets through and mm -hmm. uh undigested proteins are one of the most uh in, inflaming things to get through your um your digestive tract right. wall mm -hmm. and and then also microbes because i was eating half that gallon and half a day was kefir so the microbes mm -hmm. overt microbes and overt um undigested proteins that were in the milk were agitating my gut lining so i've learned since then to just consume the cream it just has one cup of honey in it and that's it and a gallon of a gallon of sheep milk mm. wow pretty good that's so delicious mm -hmm. <clears throat> the spork works yeah, mm -hmm. I could set this up here. No protein. Okay, this is yeah. my this is actually my breakfast. Yeah. Oh no, this is like yeah, this is like the best the best food ever. Like I think it's hilarious. I'm gonna go on an ice cream diet, like for a month and see what happens month, because, because I know that the the protein isn't gonna be over and it's gonna hurt me. So in this way, uh, as a ice creamitarian diet, I'm going to test. <laughs> I'm gonna try new things and see what's because uh, we know that the dairy animals are the most sustainable way of producing calories with land. So. If you could uh, figure out like individual um, living units that could support the, the shepherd or whatever, I think that that's what I'm trying to figure out. So deritarianism is, um, uh, is now has a new offshoot called ice creamitarian. Mm -hmm. If I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to have to figure out how to up the, the scale of this. Cause that's a one gallon pot. I think what I, what I could do is I could have some kind of an insert that goes in that fits perfect. Punch in those uh, those those measurements or whatever on that you need on uh, Google and stainless steel food container or something like that. Find one that fits and then get a screen that fits on top of it so that I can fill it up with like probably three or four gallons of uh, of sheep milk. And as it freezes, the first things that that freeze are the the water crystals and the skim milk crystals, and I'll be able to. Skim those off and then put them on just directly on top so that the uh, cream uh, has a chance to, to filter back down into it and enrich in that lower chamber more. But the, the freezing temperatures overall of the inside are going to keep those crystals from melting. So then you come back and you skim them off to give out to people. And then you keep your, keep your cream. <laughs>